The following is a slightly historical series on the Romance of the Three Kingdoms era of China's history. Because this is based off of a video game and myself playing it, there will be a lot of uh, incorrect information that we will correct using the help of Wikipedia. For those of you who want to learn more about Dynasty Warriors or the Romance of the Three Kingdoms era, I suggest reading the book. Please enjoy the following presentation. Today, the subject... I should see the stalwart warrior of Wu, a stalwart warrior with a strong sense of obligation with his twin rods, he strives to repay any debts that he or his family may incur. And it is uh, kind of interesting because he was on the not older end of the spectrum, but he was about 20 years old when the Yellow Turban Rebellion happened and he did indeed fight in that. So. Let's uh, jump into his uh, story here and see where it takes us in terms of his actual storyline. I am Taishi Chi. My lord Liu Yong controls these lands of Wu, but a man known as Sun Se is after them for himself. The enemy is spread all around us. They appear to be intent on expelling us from these lands. I know what I must do. I must go and destroy them all. I hear that the enemy leader, Sun Se, is very brave, and that he has a certain natural appeal that wins over anyone he meets. I must go and see if these rumors are true. All right, so it looks like we're skipping a lot in terms of uh, Tai Chi Chi's actual uh actual exploits because uh like i mentioned he did indeed fight in the yellow turban rebellion not you know in the big battle that everyone else was at but uh he was in uh, donglai commandery and uh that's where he grew up that's where he lived uh he learned he served a uh Zotsao chi a minor official in the local commandry office, and then around 186, the commandry administration had a dispute with their superiors, the provincial administration of Qing province. Both sides wrote to the imperial court in the capital Luoyang to complain about each other. At the time, since the imperial court often made decisions on a first-come, first-served basis, it meant that the court would tend to rule in favor of the party whose document it received first. Since the provincial administration had already sent a courier to deliver their complaint letter, the administrator of Donglai Commandry began to feel anxious and started looking for someone to help him deliver his letter. Tai Shi Tsi, then 20 years old, was chosen for the task. When he reached Luoyang after traveling day and night, he saw the provincial administration courier near the city gate. He approached him and asked, Sir, are you delivering a document? The courier replied, Yes. Tai Shi Tsi asked again, Where is the document? The courier replied, in the carriage. Tai Shi Tzu said, are you sure there is no mistake in the addressee's details on the document? Let me see it. The courier did not know that Tai Shi Tzu was from Donglai Commandery, so he showed him the letter. Tai Shi Tzu took out a knife and destroyed the letter. The courier started shouting, this man destroyed my document! Tai Shi Tzu pulled him into the carriage and said, if you didn't show me the document, I wouldn't have been able to destroy it. Regardless of the consequences, neither of us can say he is not responsible for what happened. I suggest we remain silent and escape. By doing this, we can avoid punishment and keep our heads. Otherwise, both of us will be executed. The courier asked, Your master sent you to destroy this document. Now that you have accomplished your mission, why do you still need to go on the run? Tai Shi Tzu replied, He ordered me only to check whether the document had been delivered. However, I went too far and ended up, de ended up destroying the document. If I go back, I'm afraid that my master will blame me, so I suggest we escape together. The courier was persuaded by Tai Shi Tzu, so they fled. After leaving, he secretly returned and delivered the letter to the imperial court. When the provincial administration of Qing province found out, they sent another letter to the central government again. However, as the second letter contained some discrepancies, the imperial court ruled against the provincial administration in the dispute. Tai Shi Tzu became famous after this incident. However, out of fear that the provincial administration would take revenge against him, he fled and took shelter in Liaodong. That's, uh... His earliest exploit was, uh, being a tricky little bastard in the capital city. After this, 
uh, he saved his own local warlord, Kong Rong, from the siege of Du Chang. Uh, Kong Rong, the chancellor of Beihai State, heard about Tai Chi Tzu and regarded him as an extraordinary talent. He sent his subordinates to visit Tai Chi Tzu's mother on multiple occasions and passed her many gifts. In the late 18 or in the late 180s or early 190s, when Beihai came under attack from the Yellow Turban rebels, Kong Rong led his troops to a fortress at Du Chang. The rebels, led by Guan Hai, besieged Du Chang territories after Tai Chi Tzu returned from Liao Dong. His mother told him, You haven't met Kong Rong. He treated me very generously, almost like an old friend, while you were away. Now that he is in trouble, you should quickly go help him. Three days later, Tai Chi Tzu traveled alone, on foot, to Du Chang. At the time, the rebels had yet to completely surround Du Chang, so Tai Chi Tzu managed to sneak past the enemy at night and enter the fortress to meet Kong Rong. He asked Kong Rong to let him lead soldiers to fight their way out, but Kong refused and insisted on waiting for reinforcements. The rebels came closer day by day. Kong Rong wanted to seek help from Liu Bei, the chancellor of Ping Yuan State, but no one had any idea on how to break out of the siege. Tai Chi Tsi volunteered to fight his way out and seek reinforcements from Liu Bei, but Kong Rong said, The rebels have completely surrounded the fortress. Everyone thinks it is impossible to break out. It will be very difficult for you to break out no matter how courageous you are. Tai Chi Tsu replied, When I was away, you treated my mother very generously. She feels grateful, hence she told me to help you. She knew that I kn know what I'm doing and that I can help you. Now everyone says it is impossible to break out. If I were to agree with them, I will not be able to repay your kindness. Why then did my mother send me here? We are in a very desperate situation. I hope you won't hesitate any longer. Kong Rong agreed to let him break out. He packed his equipment, had a full meal. At dawn, he brought his bow and a quiver of arrows and rode out of the fortress. He was accompanied by two riders, each carrying a target stand for archery practice. When the rebels saw Tai Chi Tzu coming out of the fortress, they immediately readied themselves for battle. To their surprise, he took the two stands, placed them in the ditch around the fortress, fired some arrows at them, and then returned to the fortress. The following day, he repeated the process. Some of the rebels stood up and prepared for battle again, seeing him, while others ignored him and remained relaxed. On the third day, when he came out again, the rebels thought he was going to practice, so they paid no attention. He then seized the opportunity to break out of the siege. By the time the rebels realized what was going on, Tai Chi Tzu had already escaped. When he arrived at Ping Yuan, he told Liu Bei, I, Tai Chi Tzu, am commander, or am a commoner from Dong Lai. I'm neither a relative nor an acquaintance of Kong Rong, but I have heard of him, and we not only share similar beliefs, but also experienced difficult times together. I also don't know why the music keeps cutting out. I think it's because the disc reader is a little dirty. But I also experienced difficult times together. Now, Guan Hai and the rebels have besieged Kong Rong. He is desperately in need of help. You are known for your kindness, righteousness, and willingness to help those in need. Kong Rong admires you and has placed his hopes in you. Hence, he sent me to fight my way out of the siege to seek help from you. Only you can save him. Liu Bei's facial expression turned serious and he said, So Kong Rong knows that Liu Bei exists in this world. He then sent 3,000 troops to follow Tai Chi Tzu back to Du Chang. When the rebels heard that reinforcements had arrived, they fled and the siege of Du Chang was automatically lifted. Kong Rong regarded Tai Chi Tzu even more highly after this event. He told Tai Chi Tzu, You are a young friend of mine. Tai Chi Tzu returned home and told his mother about it. She said, I'm very happy that you can repay Kong Rong's kindness in this way. Later, uh, right here, when uh, Tai Chi Tzu mentioned Liu Yao, uh, let's see, this is where his story begins in the game, it seems. So Liu Yao, the inspector of Yang province, was not only also from Dong Lai Commandery, but also an old acquaintance of Tai Chi Tzu. Tai Chi Tzu had not met Liu Yao since his return from Liao Dong, so he crossed the Yangtze and traveled to Kue, Kue County, present day Danyang, to find Liu Yao. Before he left, the warlord Sun Se led his forces to attack Liu Yao. Someone advised Liu Yao to appoint Tai Chi Tzu as a general to lead his troops to counter Sun Se, but Liu Yao said, if I appoint Tai Chi Tzu, Zhu Xizhang will laugh at me. He then sent Tai Chi Tzu on a reconnaissance mission to assess the strength of Sun Se's forces, which seems like it's what's happening right here. Except it looks like this is gonna be the full battle. So that was a 
I apologize for the incredibly long-winded introduction right there, but, uh... The game skips a lot. Let's get, uh... Alright, I think we've taken out enough officers. So another thing about this battle. Taishi Tsu, accompanied by only a single horseman, encountered Sun Tzu at Shen Village, somewhere in present-day Danyang. During his mission, Sun Tzu had 13 other men with him, including Han Dong, Song Qian, and Huang Gai. Let's see, where's the way out of here? Taishi Tzu? Rode forth and engaged Sun Tzu in battle. You shall speak of my blade in the afterlife. Sun Tzu thrust his spear at Tai Shi Tzu's horse and managed to grab the handheld G that Tai Shi carried on his back. Tai Shi Tzu, on the other hand, managed to get hold of Sun Tzu's helmet. Their fight was broken up with their respective subordinates showed up. Come on, won't you join me? Your skills would be a great help to our cause. You expect me to just smile and submit without even putting up a fight? Well, isn't that unique? If you want to negotiate, you'll have to negotiate with this. All right, then. Come and get it. Come, little girl, for I will conquer you. Playtime's over. Come and try me. We managed to repel Sun Tse's army. I was not sure if we could hold on. The Wu territory should know a moment's peace for the time being. However, Sun Tse is definitely a man to keep an eye on in the future. Before long, he may decide to come back and attack both Wu and myself again. Ooh. In the midst of all the fighting, I met Sunsei and decided to join him and help him realize his ambitions. However, shortly thereafter, Sunsei was killed in battle. So, after Liu Yao was defeated by Sun Tzu in the previous battle, uh, Tai Shi Tzu originally planned to accompany Liu Yao as he fled to Yuzhang Commandery. However, Tai Shi Tzu went into hiding in the hills at Wuhu County and declared himself the administrator of Danyang Commandery. By then, Sun Tzu had conquered the territories east of Zhuancheng count County, and only the six counties west of Jing remained outside of Sun Tzu's control. Tai Shi Tzu headed to Jing, where he established a base and managed to recruit the Shan Yue people to join him. Sun Tzu personally led his forces to attack Tai Shi Tzu, defeated him in battle, and captured him. Later, he released Tai Shi Tzu from his bonds, held his hand, and asked, Do you still remember our fight at Shen Village? What would you do if you captured me? Tai Shi Tzu replied, I can't be certain about this. Sun Tzu laughed and said, I shall manage the present day affairs of the state together with you from this moment onwards. Sun Tzu asked Tai Shi Tzu, In the past, you helped your commandery's administrator destroy a letter from a provincial administration, saved Wen Zhu, Kong Rong, from danger, and successfully obtained reinforcements from Zhuang De, Liu Bei. These are all acts of heroism. You are one of the most intelligent people in this world, yet you haven't found someone who appreciates your talent. The ancients could forget about Shi Go Zhuang Shu. I don't know what that means. I am someone who appreciates you. If you don't need to worry that you will feel unhappy if you join me. Sun Tzu also said if a dragon wishes to soar into the sky, it has to take off from a piece of wood. An alternative account from the Wu Li uh, 
provides a different account of how they met. It mentioned that Taishi Tzu was defeated and captured by Sun Tzu at their fight at Shen Village. Sun Tzu had heard of Taishi Tzu before, so he released him from his bonds and asked him for advice on his future conquests. Taishi Tzu replied, I am an officer of a defeated army. I'm not qualified to speak on such matters. Sun Tzu said, in the past, Han Jin needed advice from Guang Wu. In the present, I seek advice from a man of righteousness. What are you talking about? Taishi Tzu replied, my army has recently been defeated. The troops are scattered and on low morale. It may be difficult, by, but I still intend to gather and bring them together. I'm afraid it is not what you wish to see. Sun Tzu knelt down and said, What I want is your sincerity. I hope you will return by midday tomorrow. When Sun Tzu's subordinates raised doubts about Taishi Tzu's loyalty, Sun Tzu said, Taishi Ziyi is famous man from Qing province. He is known for keeping his promises. I believe he will not deceive me. Following day, Sun Tzu hosted a banquet and had a pole erected in the middle so as to keep track of time by observing its shadow. By midday, when the shadow was shortest, Taishi Tzu returned as promised. Sun Tzu was overjoyed. He often consulted Taishi Tzu on many military affairs later on. Um, then after that, we have uh, persuading Liu Yao's followers to surrender to Sun Tzu, which I think we're just going to be straight up skipping because that's another couple of uh, paragraphs that don't really matter because we're skipping right to service under the Sun family. We must save the grieving for later. First, we must realize the ambitions that Sunsei left behind. We must show those ambitions to a new world. Sunsei's younger brother, Sun Quan, has taken over as ruler, and I have started down a new path. With my might, I shall lead Wu towards unifying the land. Tai Shi Chi, like us, I know you have much sorrow over the death of Sunsei. Together, let us carry on his will in the battles ahead. Now we must go and defeat Huang Zhu at Sha Ko. He is the one responsible for the death of our former lord, Sun Jian. We shall show him no mercy. We must break through the enemy's lines and avenge our fallen master. As one might expect, the men who follow that lowly scoundrel are weak. But there is one exception, a well-known warrior by the name of Gan Ning. We must be careful not to let down our guard. So, in the uh, service under the Soon family paragraph, there is barely anything compared to everything else I was just reading. So, uh, it's likely that he did t take part in a couple of these battles between, uh, you know, now and his own death, which we will be getting to a little bit later. But uh, we'll see where this takes us, because truthfully, there, there's nothing about his future battles except for the battle where he dies, which we'll get there when we get there. Uh, but uh, there's one excerpt here. Uh, tai Shi Tzu was famous for his archery skills. There was one notable incident when he accompanied Sun Tzu to attack rebels in Ma, Bo, Ma Bao. The rebel leader stood at the viewing platform above the gate with his hand resting against a wooden pillar and hurled verbal abuse at Sun Tzu. Tai Shi Tsi took aim and fired an arrow at him. The arrow pierced through both the pillar and the rebel's hand. Everyone was awed by Tai Shi Tsi's skill. When the warlord Cao Cao heard about Tai Shi Tsi, he wrote a letter to him and put in it inside a box containing a few pieces of Dang Gui. Sun Tzu died in 200 and was succeeded by his younger brother. When Sun Chuan came to power, he continued to put Tai Chi Chi in charge of security in the areas around Hai Hun County because he knew that Tai Chi Chi was capable of deterring Liu Pan. So, it doesn't look like he may have been a part of future battles and was more of a defensive guy, a defensive general. But there really isn't much else written down. You must be more careful. Your duty is not vengeance. Your duty is to the land. Lord Sunsei and I shared a dream. I ask now that you make that dream come true. Huang Zhu, my father's blood is on your hands. It's kind of funny that in like Chinese lore and uh, history, 
It's always something like, yes, we met once and now we are best friends and I completely understand everything he ever wanted in life. Therefore, I will continue to carry on his will. It's like, sure, I guess. So, my might was not enough. I've taken out an officer. Thanks to all of you, we have defeated Wang Su and secured the lands of Xiangsha. My father and brother would be proud of us all. Now is the time to show our strength. Using these lands that father and brother worked so hard to establish as a base, we must further expand the territory of Wu. We solidified our position at Zhongdong and together with Liu Bei, defeated Cao Cao's army at Qi Bi. We formed our own kingdom to fight for control of the land with Liu Bei and Cao Cao. Ah, uh, we're not fighting Chi Bi again, bro. Now, as per our agreement with Liu Bei, we are marching on Heifei. The Wei army is stationed there, so we can defeat them and take the land. Taking the lands of Heifei will be just as if we were launching a strike on Wei's main base. We must win this battle and realize Sun Se's ambition. All right, so it looks like we're getting another situation where uh, the battle... We will soon advance our army on the Wei territory of Heifei. Tai Chi Chi, I want you to advance from the north and take over any neutral bases that you may encounter. Thank you for rudely interrupting me, Lu Mong. And thank you for the 100 bits type one. But anyway, as I was saying, uh, this looks like another situation where the battle where uh, the character we're playing as dies in the middle of our story. So it looks like after this is going to be complete fabrication, but uh, this is indeed the battle where Taishi Tse is supposed to die. Um, there is dispute whether or not he actually died at this battle because it uh, in another source. It puts him at dying two years before this battle even occurred, so we'll see. Cao Cao is the one we're after. Additionally, we must watch out for Zhang Liao, who's guarding Hei Fei. However, I don't see him anywhere. I wonder what's going on. Currently, the enemy is few and the defenses are thin. However, those that remain are veterans of many hard-fought battles. You must not underestimate the strength of their resolve. Don't look so down, Ling Tong. In this battle, we have the advantage. We are attacking Wei at Shu's request? Why must we help them? But for our sake as well, we must capture Hei Fei and stop Wei's march south. Gan Ning, you are the key to this battle. Got it? Right. Leave it to me. <laughs> are you sure your ship can carry the weight of your thick skull? When we get to those two, their story is a lot of fun. Now this battle was one of my favorites as a kid because this was the battle where Zhang Liao pops off. And Zhang Liao was my favorite character. Oh, here it is. Forward for honor! With my spear, I will sever the threads of Wu's destiny! Damn, he's cool. Without the bridge. You need a bridge? If you really wanted to, you could jump this river. Father, brother, lend strength to my ambition. It's not even that big of a jump. Relax, dude. <laughs> That's so stupid looking. We have gained the right to rule this land. Although we were unable to kill Cow Cow, 
The Wei army will not soon forget the lesson we taught them in this battle. Should we use this momentum to crush Cao Cao? Or perhaps we should break our alliance and attack Liu Bei? Or perhaps... Our next move will surely determine the fate of the land. Yeah, like I mentioned earlier, uh, Tai Chi Tzu was supposed to die in this battle as far as uh, the Romance of the Three Kingdoms goes because, um, basically, put a long story short, he set up an ambush with uh, another dude, uh, Ge Ding, who was going to uh, invade one of the bases at Hefei and so they can get the drop on uh, Zhang Liao. But Zhang Liao saw through the plot and baited Tai Chi Tzu into the base by thinking Gang De had, you know, gotten done what he needed to do. You know, he launched the signal. Tai Chi Tzu charged into the base. He got ambushed and he was killed by Zhang Liao's forces. Tai Chi Tzu narrowly escaped under the protection of Dong Ji, but later died from his wounds in camp at age 41. Uh, no details on Tai Chi Tzu's death were provided in historical records. In his biography, in the Records of the Three Kingdoms, simply mentioned that he died at the age of 41. In the 11th year of Jian An, which corresponds to the year 206, which is two years before this battle even took place. So, a little bit of a discrepancy there. I think uh, in terms of storytelling, they could have done things a little bit differently where this was his final battle. Maybe they could have given him, you know, the Yellow Turban Rebellion, then those two battles against, or that one battle against Sun Tzu, then the previous battle, then the Battle of Red Cliff, and then end it with the Battle of Hefei. That's probably what I would have done, but Due to the heavy here we go. We inflicted on Wei at the Battle of Hefei, the land has come to know a moment's peace. We must use this to our advantage and wipe out our enemies in the south. The enemy is centered around their king, Meng Huo, and they all appear to be like one big family. This unity cannot be underestimated. This battle could very well prove to be difficult. However, the bond between Tai Chi Chi and Sun Se was even greater than theirs. I ask you to draw upon that strength for this battle. We're doing this weird battle again that didn't actually happen, so I, uh... I remember asking, you know, why is, uh, like, there's so many smaller land masses in the world that struggled for, you know, like, one person to be dominant? And then you have China, which is, like, triple the size of all these other places, and, uh, it would constantly, you know, unify and break apart and unify and break apart. And someone mentioned the fact that, uh, you know, there are a lot of good natural borders around China that would, you know, kind of lend itself to that situation. So, like, you know, down here, this battle technically, or rather, I mean, whether or not this battle exists is another story, but uh, this battle takes place in the southwest. You know, in the jungles by Burma and by, you know, places down there. Very, you know, thick jungles, swamps, that kind of thing. So, like, you know, natural border right there. Who's going to want to, you know, try to invade the swamps and jungles and things like that? Uh, then you have, to the northwest, you have the Gobi Desert. And also to the southwest, you have... You know, mountains, the Himalayas. Then to the north, you have basically nothing, just flat land that uh, the Mongols would come down from every once and again. To the northeast, you had more mountains. And then to the east and southeast, you had the ocean. So it kind of makes sense that, uh, you know, China was the way it was because of its natural geography. We have defeated the Nanman king named Wu and secured the lands of Nanman. The resources here shall increase the strength of Wu tremendously. We no longer need fear of being attacked from behind. Finally, we can realize the dream of a land united under Wu. 
Shall our opponent be Cow Cow or Liu Bei? It doesn't matter. After numerous battles, the time when Wu shall rule over the land is near. With Xu gone, all that remains is our largest foe, Wei. Looking back, the time I spent with Sun Tse was quite short. However, Sun Tse's ambition and spirit continue to drive me forward, even stronger than ever. Watch this, Sun Tse. Now, I shall use all of my might to build a new world. I shall be victorious in my quest to unite the land under Wu. I like how they just write off, oh yeah, Shu is gone now. We never even saw Liu Bei once. From here on, even though we must march to Heifei and attack the new castle built there by Wei. This will surely be the final battle between us. Even though Tai Chi Chi and Liu Bei met each other in their actual personal storylines, you don't actually see him anywhere in this uh, story mode. The enemy's defenses are strong, but we shall break through them with a two-staged attack. First, we shall take the outer gates and then meet up with our other forces to break through to the castle interior. If we can win this, going back to Heifei, we shall realize a land ruled by Wu, and the long-standing chaos shall come to an end. Cow Cow, quite a castle you left behind. Are you still seeking revenge from beyond? Truly a symbol of the times. But by the end of this battle, it will be reduced to rubble. Hmm. Let's go. Prepare to land. Why is it taking so long to load? This castle is perfectly designed for these times of war. But then again, so am I. I'll break my way in and declare this victory for Wu. Lord Sunsei, witness my final and greatest act. <sighs> so this is what death feels like. I've taken out an officer. Never have I experienced such a tightly defended castle, but we were able to bring it down anyway. Above all, I must commend Tai Chi Chi for his excellent service during the battle. Yeah, that uh, he wasn't even at because he was dead at this point. But that is how things go in a video game. Again, we could have uh, we could have uh, you know structured the story a bit differently. And by we, I mean the developers of the game. But it is what it is. Way is gone, as is Shu. Finally, the land shall be united as one. I ask that you use your twin rods to further the reign and glory of the Wu Kingdom. It was during the final days of the year 200 AD when the Han Dynasty saw its end. Its demise ushered in a new era of chaos, brought on by several regional lords vying to rule China. There were those who sought absolute power, as well as those who fought for justice, and some simply fought for the sake of their beliefs. Many would rise and fall in their attempts to dominate the land, Tai Shi Chi, from the land of Dong Lai, a diligent scholar and master of the martial arts, he went to serve under Liu Yang. However, his efforts were not appreciated, and this made him miserable. That's not true. He was appreciated everywhere he went. As Sun Se began to raise troops for the conquering of Xiangdong, Tai Shi Chi retaliated. When the two men fought each other, there was no winner, as their match ended in a draw. Tai Shi Chi continued his resistance until he was at last defeated. Sun Se and Tai Shi Chi had acknowledged each other's strength, 
and the two swore to fight alongside one another to end the chaos. <laughs> However, Sunsei's life would come to an abrupt end. Even after his death, Taishi Chi swore to fulfill Sunsei's ambitions and decided to stay and support the new emperor, Sun Quan. As a general of Wu, he fought valiantly against the forces of Wei. In the final battle against Wei, he led the Wu forces to victory, thus fulfilling his promise to the departed Sun Se. The land had come under the rule of Wu, and the people enjoyed peace. Having helped bring an end to the chaos that plagued the land, it was the start of a new life for Taishi Chi. These tales, long forgotten in the flows of time, are about the legends of which no one can recall. Long forgotten because half of those didn't even happen. But yeah, like I said earlier, wasn't really much else to say because he was supposed to die in the battle against uh, Zhang Liao in Heifei. So everything after that was fabrication, obviously. I mean, uh, you know, Wu doesn't end up unifying the three kingdoms. We know that. We can play as Huang Gai. He's a cool dude. Soon say. Behold. This is the new world that we fought to create. The long battle has ended. May our weapons rest along with the souls of the dead. Farewell. For now. And just a last word about Tai Chi Chi. Uh, he was written about in the biography in the Song Guo Shi that he was loyal, righteous, trustworthy, and upright. He possessed traits of ancient sages. Yeah, cool dude. A lot of what he did was, uh, you know, obviously early on in his career, and we had to read most of it because they skipped over it here in the video game. But, uh, you know, just another cool dude. He was one of my favorite characters back in the day, mostly because of his weapons. But, uh, yeah. Let's see, we're doing Wei, Wu, and Shu, right? Or did we do Wei, Shu, and Wu? We did Lu Shu. We did uh, Zhang Fei, then we came back to Wu for Tai Chi Tzu. That means we are going back to Wei for Zhao Ho Yuan this Sunday. And uh, we did see him in that one battle, the battle at uh, on the mountain where he dies. So maybe we'll actually see him die there, or maybe that'll just be another fabrication. But we will be going back to Zhao Ho Yuan, who was a cousin of Zhao Ho Dun, who we already did in episode one. An officer under Cao Cao, he is an expert with his bow. <coughs> Excuse me. Famous for his lightning quick raids, this is one of one man you would rather have on your side. So we will be doing his story on Sunday. Uh, later tonight, we will be going back to EU4, and tomorrow afternoon, we will be finishing up Ape Escape 2. We're gonna capture all the monkeys. And that is gonna be it from us over here. Thank you very much for watching.